friends and welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you are back. Either way, thank you so much for tuning in today. If you are new, my name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they, them. Uh, okay, <laughs> today's video I'm really excited for because um, it's like nostalgia corner time basically. I don't know if this is going to be a regular thing on my channel at all, but basically um, I was going through my bookshelf a while ago and just like looking um, because I moved recently so I got like all my old books from my parents house and I noticed that I like still had some of the early comic books and books that got me into like kind of spooky subcultures and whatever and it just made me like feel so nostalgic and so like oh my god that I like looked up some of the books online specifically one series that this video will mostly focus on but I will like give a little honorable mention to some coming up um but basically I went on like a secondhand book selling website thrift books and abe books I think these ones were from abe books um because thrift books um shipping is really expensive if you're in Canada like me but if you're in the U.S. I'd highly recommend it anyway so I found these books for really cheap and I was just like so ready to relive my 13 year old like gothy memories so I like did dress up today to feel like very you know how 13 year old me would have dressed if like my mom let me um kind of thing um so quick outfit check got my pigtails I was really into Death Note and Misa Mane was like one of my style icons back then so I was always trying to do the pigtails even though I would like straighten my hair every day now I'm finally like into my natural hair texture and I think that other than the fact that I dye it all the time and bleach it all the time, my hair is much healthier. Anyway, got these like giant bat earrings that I stole from my boyfriend for the purposes of this video. I didn't steal them, we share them. Big choker, got this from Wish. Um, this t-shirt I DIY'd and I think I have a video where I show it, but it's so like corny and cute. It says, I don't need your attitude, I have one of my own. It just feels like, like I think I mentioned in the video, like something a cartoon goth would wear. Um, and I paired it with like this ripped fishnet shirt, which is just a pair of fishnets with some holes cut out to make it a shirt. Got a bunch of bangles and rings. Um, my belly button piercing, I'm like so stoked on this. I've had it forever, um, or like since I've been dating my boyfriend, but it used to be his mom's earring and it's just like this really cool spike. I think it's awesome. And I'm also wearing the skirt that I DIY'd. I'm pretty sure I have a video about it. I'll link it if you are interested. I think it's the same video where I actually show how I made the shirt. And then these boots that I found on Facebook Marketplace recently for 40 bucks, which is ridiculous. Such a crazy deal. Um, and then these mismatched stockings. Very happy. Okay, outfit check complete. Let's get into these books. I'll just talk about like some of my favorite authors um, just generally that like whose books I still have and then I'll go into the ones that I bought. Oh my god, my ring's stuck in my hair. So some of the ones that I still had on the bookshelf um, that meant a lot to me. Firstly, Neil Gaiman's been one of my favorite authors um, since I read Coraline when I was like I think it was like nine or ten and I would just like read it over and over and over and like my mom was like kind of concerned for me because she thought it was like maybe like scaring me too much or something but I just was like super fascinated with it um and I would love to go to the library and just like see all the different books that I could find. I remember some of the other books that I really liked by Neil Gaiman at the time were Stardust, The Ocean at the End of the Lane, it was so good, um all his short story collections specifically Trigger Warning and also I highly recommend his audiobooks because he reads so many of them and you could get them if you have a library card for free often times um through library card apps like overdrive so i'd highly recommend checking out those things oh my god this is like the oldest bookmark ever little like black and white kittens that's like so funny um but yeah i would just read this book over and over and over and over and like one of my favorite things about it was like the illustrations they were like very spooky and one thing that kind of bummed me out when the movie came out is that it felt like much more childlike than the book felt um because when i was reading the book like as a kid like it was obviously like the kind of book that I like kid could understand and stuff but also like it was kind of this um these horror elements that were like so creepy and fun and interesting and just like really got like my little brain like hooked um it, it reminds me of like that book um scary stories to tell in the dark when I was a kid I would just like read that one over and over until my mom like banned me from reading it because she's like you're scaring yourself too much but I was just like I don't know horror stuff has always been like so fascinating and this was like my little like baby glimpse into horror and I also just like love Neil Gaiman's fantasy stuff um Stardust is still like one of my favorite movies I like wish they would make a version of it that was like fully for adults because I feel like the version that's out now is like very for kids and I like love that um I'm like not at all ashamed to like kids media anymore I feel like when I was a kid I was like really ashamed of it and it's like so funny I like don't feel like I have guilty pleasures anymore I just like have things that I like and like 
it's fine and I like don't feel shame about them so like it's super funny to think because like back when I was like 14 and stuff I would be really embarrassed of liking stuff like Emily the Strange or like these really cheesy books that I'm gonna talk about but like now I'm like I don't care like life is sh so short and if this kind of stuff makes you happy if like the media that's like aimed at younger children or whatever for whatever reason makes you happy like I freaking love Monster High so much and I only found it in my 20s but I freaking love it and it makes me so happy so like embrace the things that you love this is one of the things that I love so I wanted to share it with you but yeah so another thing that I like to do okay that's done me talking about Coraline and Neil Gaiman I love him if you haven't just um I'll, I'll link some of maybe his audiobook short story there's one that's called the truth is a cave in the black mountain that I love so much it's from the book trigger warning and I would highly recommend it I'll try to link it below if I can find an audio um version of it of him reading it because it's my favorite thing ever okay Emily the Strange another thing that I like to do when I was younger was the few times that I would go into the city because I lived very far out of the city I love to go to comic book stores and like um record stores because it felt very like ooh, like we get to be like cool kids and like go to the comic book store and one of my favorite comics that I found there was Emily the Strange I like refound the poster that like came in this recently and like put it up in my bedroom because it just like feels so nostalgic and so good to me and stuff and I've been like looking on Facebook marketplace for like Emily the Strange books and merch and t-shirts and like stuff like that I might like DIY some stuff soon but I just love this art style so much I remember this one time I spent probably like three days or something trying to do like a really complicated drawing all in black and white and red of like Emily the Strange stuff like kind of like this because it just I could stare at this art for ages I like could get lost in it I love graphic novels so freaking much um and I just like haven't been engaging in them since like university or whatever and just like this like little trip down nostalgia lane has like been making me feel so happy and I'm like so thankful that I kept this book because it meant so much to me and like I'm sad this is the only one I kept but that's okay I just yeah it was so fun I remember I like spent so long drawing and um working on it and stuff and then I put it up in my bedroom and I was like so excited and then <laughs> my parents were kind of like uh because there were lots of like knives and like blood drippy and like kind of like more like spooky aesthetics in it and they were like very concerned and like now it's so nice that my parents are like chill with like all my spooky interests and stuff but um I remember at the time it being like very dramatic and very sad um, so if you're going through that right now, I hope it gets better for you and just hold on to the things that you love. Also look at the back of, I always love the back of the magazines where they show you like all the fun stuff you can buy. Speaking of which, I sometimes get questions about this um, poster that I have on my wall, the pork one. This is a magazine that used to be kind of um, distributed locally in my area and you can buy it online and the issues are pretty affordable so if you're like ever interested in it, um, the tagline is rock and roll weirdo art and bad ideas so if that's something that you sound interested in I would highly recommend checking out pork I liked it a lot and um, they don't distribute it for free anymore but back when I was like growing up it was like one of the free magazines around same with fast forward and beetroot I kept so many of them like, like I am a free magazine hoarder. I don't know if I got it from my grandpa. He had always like stacks and stacks and stacks of magazine or not magazines, um, newspapers from all the years like and they would just be like piled up all in his office and I just remember being like fascinated with that so I don't know if like maybe that's why I collect so many but I literally have like a stupid amount. Um, that's just like one of the piles. So yeah, love me so my love myself some free magazines. Wish I got more pork while it was out but I'm happy that I can still buy it now for an affordable price and maybe you can too. Okay, next, while we were speaking of feeling very like, you know that like 14 year old nobody understands me and I'm so dark and spooky and the world doesn't get it and like that whole feeling, this comic series, Black Alice, was the epitome of um, embodying that for me. Like the whole like no one understands me and teachers don't get me and parents don't get me and like whatever, whatever. Uh, so this felt really nostalgic to look back on. Basically, I think this is the only issue that I kept and I was like re, reading through it the other day but basically Lori has an alter ego called Black Alice and she like kind of blacks out when she takes over and stuff and there's this helmet of Athena it's like a whole thing so you know classic like goth girl superhero thing I usually am like not a big fan of superheroes but I just I love this another one that I loved I'm um, speaking of Neil Gaiman was Sandman so good I never got any physical maybe I got one physical copy of it somewhere still um but I mostly read that one online I had a big phase of like 
just all my bookmarks on my computer were like online manga and stuff that I could read and like every time like we were waiting for like something to get going in class or whatever I would just be like flipping through the manga so like Sandman was a big one that I loved there and I just loved the character Death in that. I remember I saw someone on Tumblr recently do a cosplay of her and it felt so nice to see. I Sandman deserves more recommend recognition but yeah Black Alice just figured I'd like shout that out really quickly and another one that meant so much to me this and Hell Girl which was like a Netflix series anime back then and then this was also on Netflix I think and I would read all of these at the library um, and I only purchased one issue ever the first one um, for myself but this art style I think I've talked about it before in live streams but this art style is so nostalgic for me I would always try to draw they have a very specific way of drawing smoke you can see it on the cover and to this day I still draw smoke in like the way that they draw it on here it's like so it, I love the art style so much it's about a witch who kind of tricks this guy into being her like servant um, this is called XXXholic and I know it sounds potentially dirty but it's not I remember when my mom like saw it on my list of like check out items she was like what the what is this um but it's it's not like overly dirty in any way um just a classic like how manga can be dirty sometimes but like oh this was such like style goals for me when i was 14 i also have a couple of death notes still but i feel like that's well known enough that like y'all y'all know death note it's fine i don't have to talk about that um but i feel like this one might be a little less well known same with like y'all know neil gaiman i'm sure but but in case you don't that's fine and i love him and i hope you check him out because love him and he has a tumblr which i love because i have a tumblr and it's like one of the very few social media sites that i like still actively use so now we can get to the crux of the video which is opening this package that i bought off of a secondhand bookstore of these books that i loved 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 um when i was a teenager and i was like very embarrassed of loving them a little bit um so i did give away my chapter book of it um but i remember they were both a chapter book and like a manga but it was like very like american manga <laughs> so I don't know um but regardless um the chapter book I think the thing that I like loved the most about it was like they'd go into these really detailed descriptions of all the gothy fashions and accessories and like style things that Raven the main character would wear and I just like love that so much and there was just like so much like spooky vampire cliches that were just like so cute and adorable and now that I like know Monster High it reminds me kind of a like Dracula but like a more goth Dracula and I know that people are always like whenever I talk about goth stuff people are so annoyed because like they're like oh Oh, goth is about the music and yes this part of me has also been like very nice like another thing that's been like really nostalgic for me is like going back and just like listening to sisters of mercy and listening to paralyzed age and like listening to all like my spooky <laughs> like my spooky vampire music it's just how i feel about it and it makes me so freaking happy um and i'm sorry if you take advance to me calling that spooky vampire music but that's just i don't know there is like such a joy that i feel when I, I don't know other people that like spooky stuff or like whatever you like you can understand that like when you see that thing that you like and your heart just like is like oh my god I, I love this and and I just want to absorb it and, and like I feel like my soul has like a soulmate bond with it like I don't know it's like a very weird feeling and hard to describe um, but I love it and um, so yeah basically this book uh, for some reason I only kept the third um, series of it maybe it was the only one I found at the time but I read these all at the library and then I bought the chapter book at one point um, but yeah basically it's like a manga series and it's called Van Vampire Kisses, um, and this is a third one called Blood Relatives, um, and it's about this girl named R Raven and her vampire boyfriend Alexander, which is like every like 14 year old goth girl's dream I feel like is to have like a vampire boyfriend or girlfriend or partner of some sort. Like, no? Is that just me? I don't know. And like the outfits in this? These were like my style goals when I was younger and I just like I love gothic fashion so much like I feel like there's so many beautiful things about spooky subcultures like whether it's like just alternative generally or like emo or goth or punk or like whatever like there's so many things to love like the fashion the music the art style the different like little books that get inspired by these kind of things and like show off these kind of things and I know this is like very like quote unquote childish but I need to stop apologizing for this kind of thing because I love it it makes me so happy it feels just like so cute so cute i love i love all the art i love um how corny it is 
I just, I love cheesy vampire romance stuff. Not like, I, don't, I was never into Twilight or anything, but I really like this. I really like this. And I also like um, scary vampires and like aristocratic vampires. And when I was a teenager, like my friend and I were really obsessed with Interview with the Vampire and Anne Rice and stuff. But I have a very special place in my heart for like cartoon spooky stuff like Emily the Strange and Ruby Bloom and vampire kisses and stuff. So without further ado, um, the thing that I bought was the other books in the series. So I'm gonna open them and we're gonna kind of like do a flip through. That was very difficult. <gasps> so cute. Oh, by the way, these are by um, Emily Schreiber, art by Elisa Kloon. <gasps> oh, this is so nostalgic. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, yes, this is the first one, this is the first one. Oh, does this spark, like, big nostalgia feelings for anyone else? Is anyone else, like, feeling that, like, oh my god, Raven and Alexander, like, I remember, th I remember this, this is so f***ing cute, and, like, the vampire dates, and I remember, um, when I was dating, okay, I'm still dating my current boyfriend, but when we started dating, um, like, four years ago or whatever, I was, like, talking about how, like, all I wanted when I was, like, a little 14-year-old goth was, like, some spooky guy to, like, give me a black rose. That's so corny, but he gave me one. Anyway, he's given me a bunch over the, over the year, like, not, like, a bunch, but, like, he's given me several over the years, but I have, like, all the black roses that he's given me, but that literally started because of, like, vampire kisses and Raven getting black dead roses from her vampire boyfriend, Alexander, and it's just, like, it makes me so happy and there were these like villains in it which were oh my god look at this fashion inspiration <sighs> i can't this is so cool but i remember there were these villains that like wanted to be vampires and they all dressed really really cool too and just like oh my god and raven had a best friend who was like a redhead and like with freckles and just like super cutesy and adorable and like i wanted to be raven but i felt like i was the redhead with freckles who was like corny oh my god like this was just like all i wanted was like cute graveyard dates oh my god um and it's like so nice because now as an adult i get to do cute graveyard dates with my boyfriend like that's a thing that we do now and we get to like hang out and like do our spooky things together and he like loves like listening to sisters of mercy with me in the car and just like it's it's so fun to have a partner that shares your spooky interests and that like I don't know I, like showed him my up and I was like what do you think and he's like oh like that's so fun it's like so like early 2000s like emo and I was like I know like it, it reminds me of like because I did have a big emo phase I've had like a bunch of like dipping into the emo and the punk and the goth and like all these different subcultures and now I just generally I'm like I'll just say alt because that feels like it's like an umbrella term enough that like I, I, I hate when people yell at me for being like you're not a real blah blah because um, anyway, love this so much. This is just like sparking so many amazing feelings for me. Um, I might like go and read it and like report back and like such cute costume designs and stuff. I love it. I forgot about these. I, I mean, I didn't forget about these. These have always been in my heart and my soul and like I miss them. I missed you. Reunited. Oh my God. That's amazing. Okay. And if you're curious, these are around like five bucks each on the thrift website that I bought them on and shipping was affordable. I think it was like 10 bucks. So um, yeah, I felt like I got a really good deal on these. And um, honestly, I'm just like so happy to own them. But it's really cool to have them in my hands and have them be mine and just get to like look at the beautiful art and be like super inspired because like these are so cute and I just have so many feelings. So please, please, please um, feel free to tell me what books and series and stuff you're nostalgic about. Um, if you also had like a little teenage obsession with these books or if you are going to have an obsession with these books now, um, I'd be like so honored if someone's like, check out, like I check, like whenever people tell me like, oh, I got into Monster High because of you, I like, that blows my mind. It's like such an honor and like so cool. And like, that makes me really, really happy. So um, yeah, let me know what, things you're nostalgic about. Um, if any things that I left out that you're like, oh my god, how could you not mention XYZ book? Because like, yeah, I have a lot of nostalgia around, around a lot of like spooky books. Like I remember also like Lemony Stink, it was like such a thing for me. And I forget what it's called, but there was a book series where there were twins and their ants were like actual giant ants. And I was obsessed with that book series, but I don't remember what it's called. Anyway, how delightful. Okay, I really have nothing else to say. I'm just really, really happy. Hello. I've returned to you and I have blood 
Uh, just kidding, it's peach lemonade that I, I tried to add food coloring to, but it was too red and then I added blue and it ended up looking black. But pretend it's blood! Um, okay, hello. So, I spent my afternoon reading these and I am here to report back. Um, I also had a really nice lunch and went on a walk with my boyfriend, so it was super fun. But I am here to talk about these. So if you do not want spoilers, I would not recommend to watch this part of the video. If you don't mind spoilers, let's get on to it and like talk about everything because oh my god I have so many feelings and these are so cute and I love them so much and I highly, 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 highly recommend them um, either for yourself or if you have a baby bat in your life, um, which by the way, maybe I should mention what the term baby bat is in case anyone is unfamiliar. Um, so basically, from what I understand, it's kind of like a term used for like younger or like people just getting into goth or spooky kind of music, fashion, etc, etc, culture. And a lot of people kind of think of it as like a derogatory term, but I find it adorable and really cute because like baby bats themselves are really cute, like actual baby bats. Um, and I, I, I just think it's like cute and a term of endearment and like I know some other people also feel that way. So when I say it, I mean it in like a really cute, nice way. If that offends you, I'm, I'm really sorry, that's not the intention. But regardless, yeah, if you have a baby bat in your life, I'd highly recommend this. Oh my god, this was like so nostalgic for me. It's so corny and cute and cheesy and I love it like 10 years later as much as I did when I was like 14 now I'm 24 and I it's it still I love it so much so maybe should I go like one by one into the books or like yeah and then I'll give my overall thoughts at the end okay first book basically super cute we get introduced to all the characters uh, one thing that I love and that I like forgot about that happens is like the beginning there is like the little like character intros to like all our characters and Raven lives in a town called Dolesville which like of course she does of course she does and I forgot her best friend's name was Becky Miller that's like so freaking cute anyway so um we're introduced to Alexander and Raven and I forgot this part but Alexander's an artist which like oh my god I remember like swooning about that part and like he lives in this castle and has like all of his like grandmother's old stuff in it so we like learn all about Raven and her and her life at school and her life at home and how it's all like a little bit like boring except for her like amazing relationship with her vampire boyfriend and how she's always wanted to be a vampire and like this and that and like how much she loves that kind of thing and then we get introduced to our villains um, which is Trip, Rocco, Cat, and Claude and I forgot about these guys I forgot about how many feelings I had about Cat oh my god I had so many feel like I, I love Kat like she's definitely like a villain girl but her character design is so cute and I had like such a crush on her I like forgot about this but like yes 100% so cute love this lady also Claude like he's a dick but his character design is pretty cool and Kat is actually like one of Alexander's exes so it's like ooh drama drama all the villains which are Claude is the cousin of Alexander which is Raven's boyfriend, um, they all come to Dollsville High, which is Raven's school, and it's all like, oh my god, what are we gonna do? And the thing with the villains is that the three of them are half vampires, unlike Alexander, who's a full vampire, and he, like, can't go out in the sun, and he has, like, all the pros and cons of being like a full vampire immortal etc etc they are half vampires and they get like i don't want to say bullied but like yeah bullied essentially by like their they, like back when they were in transylvania they would get bullied by like all the other like full vampires and they, you're not real vampires you're just like half vampires and i like related to them and i like felt so bad for them so it was really sad and um basically what we the plot of the first book is that the half vampires are trying to get these vials of blood that alexander's grandmother had um that will turn them into full vampires and um, Alexander and Raven are trying to stop them because they think that if Claude and his gang get the vials of vampire blood that they're gonna like be too powerful and like cause all this havoc and like they can't like be too powerful and I'm just like let them have let them have the vampire but like let them be full vampires that's kind of how I felt um, but one thing that I loved so much was at the end we have all these like notes about the character designs and like some things that they like went through and changed and stuff and one thing that I loved so much I think I mentioned this earlier but Kat's original character design here oh my god they said it was like too um young looking for someone who used to be Alexander's girlfriend and they wanted to like kind of make her like more mature or whatever but I I love it it feels so Draculaura I love the pig tails I love like the giant skull bait bracelet the giant boots the giant teddy bear like I'm obsessed and one of the things that I forgot that's like so cute is like the tiny little doodles in the corners I love it I forgot about those and then there's previews to the chapter books at the end of the at the end of the chapter so yeah that's the first one basically we get introduced to everyone we get introduced to the villains Trip, Rocco, Claude, and Cat. it's just like oh my god all of them are so cool I like forgot how cool I thought they were book number two is 
more of Raven's life in Dolesville High and her deciding to cook up a plan with Alexander to, to basically misdirect Claude and the gang by making fake vampire vials of blood and being like, these actually have to be consumed in Transylvania. Um, so you have to go all the way back there. You know, so it's like her plan to get them to fight off. So that's their plan and it's like going really well. And as usual, we have amazing fashion. Look at this, look at this outfit. I want this outfit so bad. It's so cute. Oh my God, I love the art style so much. The villains also have like the coolest art styles. Like I want all of Kat's clothes so bad. They look like such a fun gang. And at the end we get more fashion sketches, which I love. I love these so much. These are so beautiful and like so inspirational. I really, really enjoy it. And then, <laughs> This is so cool because we see the butler in this one, which is, whose name is Jameson, and they had like a bunch of different designs, like possible designs for him at the beginning. This is kind of what we ended up with, this guy here. And he reminds me of, um, you know in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, the guy at the beginning who greets them at the door. I forget his name, but he's like blonde and scraggly looking. Okay, so when I watched Rocky Horror Picture Show for the first time, I had like a crush on that guy and I like told my boyfriend of that and he's like, he's like, oh my God, you just love like little fucking gremlin man. And it's like, ah. yeah, so it was really funny um, to see him look like Riff Raff. Oh my God, I was, I'm just gonna die. His name's Riff Raff. Okay, I had such a crush on Riff Raff when I was like when I first saw Rocky Horror Picture Show, which sounds stupid and like might be embarrassing, but I don't care. Unapologetically love this guy. Not that this is Riff Raff, this is Jameson, but regardless, um, he's, he's got the same back. So yeah, the ending of this book is actually a cliffhanger for the next one because what happens is that Claude finds Raven's diary and finds out about the plan and finds out that, the, that they were gonna divert them with these fake blood vows. So he like knows that the real ones are out there and it's like, oh my God, like what's gonna happen, right? So then we go into book three and Claude and the gang are still looking out, looking out for the vampire blood, um, but they're also still students at the school. So they decide to throw like a big prom for everyone because their plan is to turn a bunch of the students at the prom. So have, they have all these like half vampire students. And we see Becky, Becky going to the prom and like the, the, the thing is supposed to be like spooky or whatever. So she dresses up in this black cat costume and Raven's like, oh my God, like that won't do, like we'll have to dress you up. But I love her black cat costume. Like she's adorable. Precious! I love Becky! Oh my god, so stinking cute. But then she gets up in this like vampire princess outfit and I love that for her too. And then her date Matt, which is like one of the popular boys, like she loves him and, and he dresses up like kind of like spooky. So it's just like fun to get to see like everyone at the school dress up spooky. And Claude and his gang of vampires are playing at the event <laughs> essentially. Like they're the band and they look so good. Let me find the page. Look at them! And their like performance. Um, yeah, so they're basically like, since they're the hosts, they're like playing the band and they're like, we're gonna like crown the vampire king and they're trying to get um, Alexander to turn Raven because they're saying like, oh, like you have to bite her neck and like blah, 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 blah. Also, there's so much kissing in this comic book. I forgot about that, but there's like so many like dreamy kiss pages like this that just like feel like so romantic and nostalgic for me. And I just like remember being like 14 and like <laughs> very lonely and just like really wanting that. And they get this like giant coffin at the like, spooky prom that um, is a trap, but it's just like so fancy. And like, I remember all I wanted when I was a kid, like when I was 14 was like, just like a big spooky coffin bed. And like my dad's a carpenter and he like makes all the stuff out of wood, like the desk behind me he made and stuff. And I wanted him to make me like a coffin bed so bad, but he was like, mm. That's creepy, please no. Um, anyway, regardless, this book is probably my favorite one, which I guess makes sense to why I kept only this one, because what happens is that they do find the vampire vials, the, the blood vials. Claude and the gang like stumble upon them and stuff, but the problem is that there's only one vial. So Claude is like, I, if you know, I wanna be the vampire, you can all be like half vampires. And he like beats up all the members of his gang to try to like, you know, be like, I'm gonna be the one. And then he's like looking around at all his friends who are like beat up and he's like you know what no if i can't be a vampire like a full vampire without you get like with you guys then i don't want to be one at all and it's like such an awesome turning moment for claude and he just like gets like this really nice redemption arc in that moment um and then alexander says like you know what um you only need a little bit all of you can 
become full-fledged vampires, so then they all become full-fledged vampires, and they promise to, like, use their powers, like, responsibly and stuff, and it's, it's so, like, heartwarming. It, like, gives, it gives me the same, like, warm, fuzzy feelings that I get, um, at the end of Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, like, the movie, when she's, like, accepted into the town, and everyone's like, yay, the spooky lady. Like, I just, I love, I love when the spooky characters have friends and when like the evil guys like <laughs> have like strong friendships and stuff like that like these kind of things just make me so happy so those were these three books and they were so so special and really really fun and they were kind of like one contained story between the three of them and they were all done by the same artist and the thing that's interesting is that the other book I didn't know this and I actually didn't know this was a book when I was younger because I don't remember this one at all I remember these three but I don't remember this one like at all and it's really fun um one of the things that caught me off guard was that the artist is different and it like really threw me off guard at the beginning because I was like whoa I was not expecting um that I'll try to put like maybe a picture side by side um next to me so like y'all can see but this was such a fun read and I honestly really wish that I had known about this one when I was younger I don't know maybe if it got published later than the others 2011 hmm Shouldn't have been that late. Anyway, regardless, I never knew about this one. Maybe my library just didn't have the specific one for some reason. Um, but yeah, the art style is different, um, but the more I read it, the more I got used to it, and the more I liked it. And I loved this story because what it's about, it's um, kind of after the villains, so-called, have been turned to full vampires and they're still in Dollsville and um, Trip, the kind of nerdy guy of the group, wants to go back to Transylvania. But Claude, the leader of the group, who's like the cool guy, he like wants to stay in Dollsville because he's like, listen, in Transylvania we're like one of many vampires, but here like we're some of the cool guys and like, like this is such a small town, like we can be kind of like the, the big fish in the small pond sort of thing. Um, and Trip disagrees, but um, also all the members of his gang are like, we can't be without Claude. Like, Claude's kind of like the leader of our group, the glue that holds us together, so like, we can't be without him and like, wherever he goes, we're gonna go. Um, so they decide to stay there, and at Dollsville High School, what's happening is that they're making a production musical of Cinderella, and everyone's auditioning and stuff, and Raven gets put on stage to audition, and they don't want her to be one of the actors or anything, but the d director looks at her and it's like, oh, like, you have a very unique style, like, maybe you can be the costume designer. And this made me so happy, because I friggin' love fashion, as you might know, and when I was a kid I wanted to be a costume designer, and my thesis in university was about, um, queer fashion and costume design and DIY shit. Um, which I have a video about if you're interested. I know I like talk about it a lot, but like, well, uh, anyway, it was really cool and I wish I'd known about this when I was younger because it would have been like really cool to see Raven, like a fictional character that I really look up to and admire, have this fashion design kind of situation. And then it's extra cool because all of the drawings of the designs she does are like so inspirational and so beautiful and everyone um it's not like she has to do cinderella in the normal way she gets to do cinderella in her like gothic beautiful corsets and lace and like little skulls and spider webs and like all this stuff the way that she would do it and one of my favorite things is the cinderella slipper like can i show you guys that's the glass flipper that she makes. Like, I love it! I love it so much. Like, 14-year-old me would have been, like, obsessed, crying, screaming, wailing on the floor, throwing up, you know, all of the things. I love it so much. It's so cute. Look at this. Look how cute this is. I can't. I can't get enough of it. Anyway, regardless, so she gets to be the costume designer. She makes everyone's costumes really spooky. But what happens is that because the bad guys are still like kind of in the background causing mischief even though they said they'd like use their powers for good one of the things that happens is that one of them wants to trick Claude who's playing the prince in Cinderella into turning the actress who's playing the princess in Cinderella who's playing Cinderella in the play um, into a vampire and the way they're gonna trick her is by like putting some blood in a locket making her wear the locket on stage and then he's gonna like be tempted and like not be able to resist and bite her on stage and turn her into a vampire and then they can take over and etc etc however the actress that's gonna be play Cinderella for the night is cut with laryngitis the understudy is out like gallivanting wherever she is. So who can play Cinderella? Well, you guessed it, Miss Beautiful Raven. She's the only one who can do it, right? Right. 
But then what happens? The locket. This situation with Cinderella having to wear this locket that has blood on it and the plan that Claude's gonna bite her, right? But of course that's not gonna happen. Of course Alexander, her prince, is gonna like swoop in and save her and it's so cute. He like rushes into the play and like disrupts it and they fight and they dance and Raven and Alexander of course have like a beautiful time in the play <laughs> it all works out and it's so cute i freaking love cheesy cute stuff i love cheesy vampire stuff i forgot how much i love vampires i was like walking with cage today and i was like we were like quiet for a while just kind of like holding hands and walking and i was like ah he's like what you want to be a vampire and i was like yeah and he's like what really <laughs> like that's what it is like still because i just it's so nostalgic and i forgot how bad I wanted a vampire boyfriend and how bad I wanted to be a vampire and this is just like such warm fuzzy feelings. I am so thankful that I found these like for a really good deal. I am so thankful that these books exist. I'm so thankful that they exist in this form because the art is seriously like so inspirational and I was able to get through them in like one afternoon um, as opposed to like the chapter books which I looked and there's like 16 of them and I'm definitely like interested in them but I feel like it would be a little more of a time intensive thing and this was just like a huge rush of endorphins and happiness and just like brighten up my day um, that was that was really fun and I'm really happy that I like have these on my bookshelf now and can just pull them out anytime I like need that little pick-me-up so yeah highly recommend if you are into romance spooky adorable cheesy vampire stuff um they're classified as romance slash horror i don't think there's like that much horror in them honestly and there's nothing like overly explicit like there's no nudity or anything but there's like a lot of kissing and all the kissing is really cute and really like dreamy and like whatever whatever um but there's no like insane like blood or gore like it's i would say it's like pg-13 pg whatever yeah age 13 plus i would agree but yeah it's super cute I really like it. I highly recommend it for the art, for the fashion, for just like the nostalgia factor, for just like if you want to dive into those baby bat feelings. Like I feel like even if you didn't grow up with this, you would still get nostalgia feelings from it. Like I talk about this all the time. I didn't grow up with Monster High, but I get hardcore nostalgia feelings from it regardless because I don't know. Same with like troll dolls I didn't grow up. Well, I did kind of grow up with troll dolls. Um, lately I've been, one of the things that I've been really into lately is Zelfs. I think they're so cute. I have them here. All my Zelfs I found at the thrift store. This one, like you press the button and it glows. But yeah, I freaking love nostalgia stuff. I love finding new nostalgic things to be interested in. Oh yeah, there it goes. The hair is glowing. I forgot that that's what happened. Um, but regardless, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I just have a lot of like wonderful, happy feelings right now and it's just like so exciting to be able to experience that again. So um, yeah, I hope that you are having a wonderful day or night whenever you are happen to be watching this. I hope that you give these a look if you are interested and I hope that um, yeah you can share with me some of like your favorite nostalgic kind of things in the comments below because I love reading that kind of stuff and I um, always put a smile on my face. So yeah thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye.